In this video presentation, we're gonna take our skills from terminating light switches, which is very early on in the learning we're doing at Tresham College, and adapting it slightly in order that we can connect a BS1363 socket outlet. The problem being with my learners is, is that they don't terminate the conductors correctly into the back of the socket outlet. They use the skills that had previously only just learned a light switch. So this video presentation is all about just adapting that thinking in order to connect into the back of a socket outlet. I'm going to bring the camera in and we're going to show that termination process next. So before we look at the terminating of the back of the BS1363, in this case single switch socket outlet, let's just look at the actual size of the terminations we were using in our light switches. So we, we made quite small doubled over terminations to go in either our one gang one way here or a one gang two way light switch. The problem being as we move forward is that we end up repeating that process again. So when we look for the socket, this is a 2.5 millimeter squared cable simulating 0.5 in our job, is that we've got quite a small doubled over termination because that's what we've been practicing on our lighting circuits and that's the first thing that we do wrong. We need a termination that's considerably bigger. So if we put the two side by side there, you can see the one that I've already practiced in order to go into the back of my socket outlet is massive compared to the one that we'd previously done on a lighting circuit. And that's what this video is about, just confirming that we get the right doubling over compared to the hole in which we're going into, and in this time, it's the hole in the back of the socket outlet. Let's move the camera over and have a look at how that's gonna go into the socket next. So let's prove the point then. So I've got my very small doubled over 2.5 termination. I'm simulating as if it was my line conductor here. So I'm practicing before I start. And I'm gonna put that into the actual back of the socket outlet. Okay, and I'm gonna push it all the way in. Another mistake my learners make is they grab the terminal screwdriver, because that's what they've been using previously on the lighting elements of this exercise, which we don't need. We need to go across to our medium flat tip screwdriver. So I'm gonna put that in, I'm gonna tighten it up to see if I can prove the point if we are too small with our terminations. So down we go, tighten that one off, and then take it back out just to show you. So we come back out, and hopefully you can see that actually we've caught more of the PVC than we have the actual copper itself. So we're between the PVC insulation and the copper conductor. Therefore that conductor must have been too small to go into the hole in which I put it in. If we change it over now and look at this one here, let's see if that one goes in comfortably. It does, and as I look at it on the angle, can I see any copper showing? No, I can't. If I pull it back slightly, you can see there's where the copper is and it's in. Look at the difference in the length of that termination compared to the depth of the hole within the actual back of the socket outlet. So that's correct. So that's the sort of depth that we need. I recommend to all my learners they practice terminating these conductors 2.5 to go in the back of this socket outlet before we actually start this exercise. Let's terminate the conductors here now into the back of the socket outlet next. So we've got two socket outlets here. I'm going to be terminating this one. This is a different manufacturer and make. Remember, whichever one we're gonna choose, my learners, we need to practice dropping the termination into the back of it to see if it is correct. These holes sometimes are of different depth and therefore the length of the doubling over of the termination needs to suit the socket outlet that you choose in order to install it at stage five in your job. I've chose this brand in order to install it. So I need to now work out how long my conductors need to be past the box. And for this one, we say about 70 mil for all of the conductors. So 70 mil past the box. I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm just gonna cut those off. And I'm now ready to look at doubling over those terminations as the one I practiced was. So quite a large doubling over of the terminations. Not the CPC, I'm concentrating on just the brown line conductor and the blue neutral conductor next. So I'm gonna try and do it as best as I can without knocking the actual camera itself. I know lots of people out there don't use it. They might use wire strippers or maybe pliers or side cutters. We're still very early stages. So as my learners are working on their dexterity, we're gonna be using a knife. We're gonna take our conductor, score all the way round with our knife. Okay, and then hopefully we can just pull that away. Look how massive it is compared to perhaps the ones we've been doing on our lighting circuits. We're gonna take slightly less than half so from this point forward, we've got slightly less than half and slightly more here because we're gonna bend it around the circumference of the pliers. So I'm gonna take that and bend it round. And I'm gonna double over my termination. Hopefully the pliers are decent this time. And I'm now ready 
to connect that conductor I would now go on and do obviously the neutral next so I'm going to double over the neutral in exactly the same way and if you wanted to you could use the outside PVC that we just used there in order to mark our position with our knife so we actually got the doubling over exactly the same or you could have used it when it was at bare copper at the first part of that stage so you got a couple of things I brought the camera in nice and close just to try and show you what I'm doing hopefully it won't knock the camera too much so around with a knife and hopefully we can just pop it away and then we've got that we've got our conductor there ready to double it over exactly the same technique we just used grabbing from this end slightly less than half of the pliers and having slightly more than half this side and folding it over so we've got a doubled over termination exactly the same as the line conductor so we'll do that and then we'll connect them into the back of the actual socket outlet itself so again i'll try and do it nice and close so what i've got there is possibly slightly less than half here slightly more than half here again being really close it's really difficult to get it to come over and now i just need to squeeze that gap up like so so hopefully that's showing you a little bit closer i just need a tiny bit of work on that bit there just squeeze that up yep so we've got a super doubled over termination exactly the same as the line conductor so we've got the two terminations ready now to go into the back of the socket outlet so we'll come back to the CPC in a moment. In order that we connect these correctly, we need to make sure we're using our electrician screwdriver. Remember what I said at the start of the presentation, people tend to keep using the terminal. You won't get these tight enough. So we're gonna use an electrician screwdriver now. We put the brown line conductor in the area marked L and the blue one in the area marked N for neutral. So we've got L for line conductor all the way in, hold it into position. So you've got it down and then we'll tighten that screw off. Uh, we tighten that one down nice and tight and then we take the same for our neutral conductor again hold it down and into position so it's fully pushed in so I'm pushing down on it before I tighten up that termination using my electrician screwdriver okay we're ready to have a look at the circuit protective conductor next if I use my line conductor only from the point of view that I want to look at the amount of copper I doubled over for the terminations we've just done for line and neutral and use it to put it into the hole where the CPC will go, you can see, wow, it hardly goes in at all in this style of socket outlet. So it only goes in about half the distance of that. So if I was to terminate my CPC at that, it would obviously be too large. So we're going to need to use a smaller doubling over method for this. And again, it won't matter if a little bit of copper on this one is showing because obviously I can touch the brass connecting point, but we didn't want any copper showing at all where we connected our line and neutral. So I'm only touching PVC in this area here. So no copper showing, really important to me that is. So let's do the CPC. Take my CPC sleeve in, lay it over the top to the desired length. Take my pliers. And then we wind that down. So I push it down onto the CPC, exposing the area there. It's probably a little bit large. So I'm just gonna trim that back. Okay, so I'm about roughly half what I was on my line of neutral conductors. And again, I'm gonna double that over. Like so. And into my CPC termination. Again, using my electrician screwdriver into the hole there. Hold it down into position in order to get it tight. Like so. Give it a little tug. And we've now terminated our single socket outlet. Our conductors are still longer than the box. Gaz expects that to happen. It makes them easier to dress within the box itself. And we'll just prove a point. So we're gonna now just push them down, spread them out into the box itself. And we go down into position and we can easily pull them back forwards and backwards and forwards. Okay, we're not gonna screw ours down for this exercise because I haven't got X-ray vision, I need to mark these. But because we've pushed it down into position, pulled it back out, it's worth just going back in with your electrician screwdriver and just checking those terminations are still tight. They haven't settled in and become slightly loose. Good little tip for you there. So we've terminated our socket outlet using considerably larger doubling over than we did maybe when we simulated a lighting one on the previous exercise here, in order that we can catch the copper and not the PVC insulation when terminating it. And as it's our first one or two that we're actually connecting, we need to practice doubling these over and checking them in the back of the socket outlet first, so we get exactly the right depth. I hope this video has been some help.